Right, so to start things off, I thought it would be fun to actually show a few different things you can do with curves and a geometry nodes combination, right? Last time we started off with the creation of a little branching system that was made with, with the repeat zone. But today I want to focus on very simple things you may be able to do very quickly with geometry nodes and curves, okay? So let's just start off by creating a curve. All right, so let's delete this cube, hit Shift A. And when I'm adding a cube, I always start with a Bezier, even though I'm not gonna use this curve whatsoever. I go into edit mode with tab, press A, press delete and delete all vertices right away because I don't need that original shape. I just need the curve setup. So even though you can't see it in the right, top right, we can see we still have our curve. Right, so let's name this to something we wanna, wanna have, maybe curve one for now. <laughs> And usually what I do is just draw my own curve, right? On the left, we have a tool window. And let me increase the size a little bit. There we go. And if you want to increase or decrease the size, by the way, I'm not sure if I shared that, you can hold control and scroll up and down. Beautiful. You can do that with any interface. Make it bigger, make it smaller in case you need to. Right, so I'm going to take the draw tool and I'll just draw my curve. Amazing. And we can draw it as any shape we want, right? So that does not matter at all because later we will be able to change this. And if you are in the curve draw mode, you'll also see the surface tab there. You can either do cursor or surface. If you enable surface, we can draw a curve on, for example, Suzanne, right? If we add Suzanne and we now go into our curve and draw with the surface selected and we draw over Suzanne, it's actually going to place our curve on Suzanne, as you can see. All right, this is very useful for, well, a lot of things. If you want to add some kind of a string on this guy, you can do it. You can even use it for hair, stuff like that. It's very useful. Let me control set a few times. There we go. So this is our curve, okay? And the reason why I'm going to show you guys a little bit of, about curves is because it is a huge time saver, a huge cheat if you know how to use it quickly. You can literally make anything ever organic, natural, any nature asset that you want to have, you can make it and make it procedural. It saves a lot of time. All right, so we're going to keep it a little simple and I'm going to give you a few examples that I have been creating, for example, for Mossify. And well, we're just going to have some fun with the curves. So let's set this to Geometry Notes Editor and let's hit this, the shader editor is the wrong one. Geometry Notes, hit new. And we now have our geometry nodes input and output, right? So the input is the curve. The output is also the curve straight line connection. Okay, so whatever we do in between here, we want to make some magic. All right, so what I'm going to do first is show you a nice way to create some branches out of this original curve. Because branches, there are a lot of tutorials on branches, but all of them are a little bit different. And... It is not that straightforward on how to deal with branches and how to get it to rotate the proper way. All right, so that's what I'm going to do first because a lot of things in nature that are either branches, trees, plants, things that branch out, even like fractal snowflakes, stuff like that, they do use, well, branching, right? So let's start off with that. So if we hit Shift A and search for an instance on points, right, then we can place a new instance on any of the points in this curve. And you have to visualize this curve as, well, a curve with a lot of points. But you have to remember also that we're using a Bezier curve. And a Bezier curve does not really consist out of points right away. It rather consists of a few points with curve handles, right? If I go into edit mode, we can see there are like two, three, four, five, six points, and they all have their own little handles, which means I can select a handle, move it around. I can even scale it. It doesn't really do a lot, but you know, we can do whatever, rotate, move. So that is what a busy air curve basically is. It consists of a few, few points and handles. Okay. So that means that if I connect this group into the points and hit shift A and join those new instances to the joint geometry there we're not going to be able to see anything because we don't have an instance so drag that out and just set this to like a uv sphere for now 
and let's decrease the radius, right? So you can see that we don't really have a straightforward way of placing these spheres right away, right? But they are just on those little points that have their handles, right? So they are not evenly spread whatsoever. And this will usually not work well for your branching kind of system, right? We want to be able to control how many points and where they are located and how far apart they are, for example. Okay, so to start this off, I will leave my Bezier curve connected to the joint geometry because it's a very nice smooth shape that I want to keep. But for the instancing, I'm just going to resample this curve, right? So hit Shift A and search for a resample curve and we can set that to 10, beautiful. And now we have an even distribution, right? So if we see this curve, you can see it has very blocky, but it has, well, a fixed length of each of these segments, right? But we don't want to see this. We just want to use it for those instances. Just so when we join it back up later, we see the instances on the nice evenly spaced locations, but we also see the original smooth curve, right? Nice. All right, so let's keep this a little bit organized right from the start and delete this UV sphere because we don't want that. What we want to do is create a new set of curves, right? So every branch is going to be its own little curve. So if I grab this instance and drag that out and we type in, let's do a curve line, all right? That's just a very easy straight line coming out of those instance locations. Now they all go straight up. Which may be fun. I mean, if we're in the water and we want to make some seaweeds, usually it goes more like straight up, right? And if I'm, if that's not what happens, then correct me, Hazy. But I feel like uh, in water things flow tend to float up a bit more. And if we want it more like a tree kind of system, they go a bit more off to the sides. All right. So that is something we can specify later on. But for now, we're gonna work with what we want to have, which is more of like a branch and a real, a real life kind of tree branch, right? So we have a curved line and we want to rotate that more towards the actual curve direction. And there's a few things that you need to keep in mind now. And I'm going to use the draw tool for a sec. I'm going to hold D, you'll see me pressing D a lot here. And so there's, there's like a curve direction at every point, right? This is the direction, which is called the curve tangent. It's basically the direction of a curve. At every point, it will have a different direction. And if we go perpendicular to that, we're going to have the curve normal, normals, right? The curve normals will point out pretty much. So in per perpendicular on those tangents. And they can be completely circular around that curve profile, which means they can be in the side directions as well, as long as they well, are perpendicular to that little little tangent line there. All right, so let me get rid of this drawing stuff real quick. So now that you know what the tangent is and the normals, we can try to use that to rotate these instances the right way. All right, so to do that, we can grab this rotation value and, well, do something with it. So what did I tell you? We have a curved tangent and a curved normal. So let's see if we have a curved tangent. We do. Do we have a curve normal? We don't. We do have a set curve normal, but that's not what we need. We just need the information of what the curve normal or tangent is. All right, so let's use the curve tangent because if we have one of those, we can just transform them into the others by rotating it pretty much. All right, so if I'm connecting the tangent to the rotation, you're gonna see that we get some some weird stuff. It doesn't really match up what we need, and it's also a little bit chaotic what is happening, right? It's not really straightforward. So what we need to do is we need to grab the initial rotation of this curve line and align that to the vector of the tangent, right? The tangent, remember, is gonna be the direction of the actual curve at every point. So that is what we wanna align it to first. So if we hit Shift A and search for an a line Euler to vector, there we go. You can see that it doesn't work right away and that is because we need this tangent to be plugged into the vector because it is the direction that we want it to go in. There we go. Now the X value is basically not what we need at all. What we look at is the Z and the X value. If we set this to Z, it is going to follow the curve tangent, right? The direction of those 
points, the direction of the curve, the direction vectors that are going along the curve, as you can see. Beautiful. Now, if we turn this to Y, it's going to be the curve normals, right? So let me decrease this a little bit. And you can see that this is exactly what we're looking for, right? But it all only goes in one direction, right? <laughs> we don't want this. It could be fun when you're like creating a little road. You can make one side or a real track, you know, real road track and connect the other side with a new curve. And then you basically already have your real road track, I guess, you know, you can even draw that beautifully, right? So you can see how, how easy curves are to create all sorts of shapes. It's not just nice for plants and organic stuff, also for things like that. Roads, railroads, stuff like that. Right, so let's create a little bit of a random rotation there. So we have our align Euler to vector. And I want to rotate this with a random value around the, well, tangent axis, right? This axis. So then we can rotate our line completely around the curve. And that's what we're going to be doing next. So shift A, and we can now do an Euler rotate or rotate Euler, whatever. Connect that in between. And we can set this to be an axis angle, right? If we set this to an axis angle, we're getting a new little section at the bottom with the angle and we keep the axis as well. If we only have Euler, we can only rotate it by a specific kind of value. But with the axis, we can specify the axis and the angle, which just gives us a, one more variable that we can tweak basically. So I just told you that the axis it has to rotate around is the tangent. So we can connect that up there. And now for the rotation, well, we can do whatever, right? So it may look like they're just shrinking and getting longer, <laughs> but if I'm going in 3D view, we can see that it rotates around that line, right? Isn't that beautiful? Let's set it back to zero. So how do we change this that not everything has the same rotation, right? So we want this value to change dependent on the actual, well, curve right on the actual instance. So we want this to be randomized per instance. So to do that, we can just drag this out into a random value. There we go. And this random value can basically go from minus pi to pi pretty much, right? So in total, this is two pi, which is the full circumference of a circle, right? So now if we go into 3D view, we have this moving all around the circle pretty much, all right? So it depends a little bit on the seat you use but everything is random. Now, in some cases, especially when you want this to be, for example, ivy leaves that are growing on side of buildings, you only want this to go into one direction, right? So that means that we either want this to go into the top direction because, well, it can't can go further back. For example, if you have a plane that acts as a wall right there, behind our curve. Why did I rotate it? It's so weird. Interesting. 90. There we go. So if this will be our little wall, then how would we make sure that we get a random rotation of these curves anyway, but they stay on top of our face? Well, that is quite easy as well. So all we need is to start off a rotation that goes into either the top side or the bottom side, right? So that's gonna be zero or 360 or 180 is what I mean. 180, right? Hopefully you can still see this a little bit. Let me hide this plane for a sec. There we go. So we want this to be either zero and 180 and to well, switch around between those two, we can use Shift A, a switch node, all right? And we want this to be a float. And we want one of these to be zero and one to be 180 degrees. Now remember, we work in degrees here, but here we work in radians, which means one thing that we need to convert this back to, you know, pi values. And well, half a circle is pi, 180 degrees is pi. So just type in pi. Beautiful. So now we can connect this. And you can see that if this switch is off, this value is false, we get zero. And if we turn this on, we get a value of pi, right? So you can see that we can switch the direction, which is quite useful. Right, so how do we switch this randomly? We can drag this out into, um, let's say, random value, right? And we can even set the probability, but now it will 
pick a random value of false and true, pretty much, right? And depending on the probability, we can make that more or less to the bottom and to the top, All right? So that is something you can use if you set this to 0.5. You'll have half of these points going up and half of them going down, pretty much. It's also fun to have it separately, right? For example, you have steps where the first one goes left, the second one goes right, the third one goes left, the fourth one goes right. Pretty much an even odd kind of system, which is also very doable. All we need is hit shift A and we're going to need an index. And what the index value lets us do is basically specify which instance we are currently working on. Right, so every instance has its own little index, it's its own um, instance, right? So with this index, we can make sure that we can actually specify the direction per instance, per curve. So we're going to use this with a little bit of math magic, all right? And we want to compare this. Let's see if it is in here. There, is, there it is. We want to compare this index to a value. And we can actually just set this to be a modulo, which is also going to compare. Uh, a modulo is, well, you can look at it basically as follows. A modulo will compare the input with the output. And if it is, well, divisible cleanly by this number, it's going to give a true output. Which means that if I set this to 2 and our index is 2, it is, well, divisible by two, and then we'll get a true output. If it's three, we are going to get a little bit of a less clean output, not an integer at least, and it's going to turn false. With four, divisible by two, beautifully. And five, no, six, yes, seven, no, eight, yes, right? Stuff like that really works nice. You can use modulus for that. You can set this to three and, well, select every third number pretty much. I think that is how it works. Um, if not, you know, there's some mathematicians out here um Boulevard or Sylvester that may uh, may one up me on this. Um I usually use it for this at least and then we can connect this to the switch. Right? And you can see that every other little indexed spline is now well rotated in the other direction, which is beautiful. Alright, so this is usually what I like to use for branches and stuff like that just to have more of an even kind of spread which goes up which goes bottom and in the end that will also be more performance enhancing for the system because well if you have two branches that are going to be going the same way and you have leaves on those branches some of those leaves are going to intersect and that is basically space you're having doubled right leaves you have double and you don't want that really right so that is why i try to do something like this usually right so that is a nice way to do that